Hello everybody, hope you're doing okay. Welcome to Basingstoke and the Downgrain track. And this is a track that's sort of provided for the community use and they say that uh, public can use it any time other than the club night. So that's good. So I thought I'd nip on and do a few laps. What I also thought I would do is I'd try out Garmin's new track run facility on there. Sort of some of their watches like the 945, the 245 and the 745. Now fortunately I have a 945 and a 245. I've just been a beta, just come out with the, with the facility included. So going to give it a go apparently what you're meant to do is you run around the track a few times i think you're meant to do at least two laps and you have to tell it what lane you run in any i think any speed will do and then it kind of maps the track and then the idea is that after that uh, when you run around the track again it kind of knows the shape of the track so it should be able to sort of tell you a very good indication of how far you've gone round, and hopefully you'll get a very nice gps track at the end of it so we'll give that a go and see if it works so I'm going to show you the setup here on the Garmin. I've already loaded up the track run beta and I've set it as a new activity. So let's go into the activity. And if we go into the options for it, so you've got track run settings and you can configure your data screens how you like as normal. But the new one here is lane number. So I think I'm going to do my configuration run in lane five to keep out of the way of any people doing any proper intervals. So I set it to lane five. And you can set up alerts as well, metronome, auto lap I'm going to set up as 400. So I'm going to do my two configuration laps and see how that pans out. So here I'm in lane five, I'm going to run that way, the normal way around the track for a couple of laps and see what we make of it. I don't think this will be anything particularly exciting. You just need to do a run here and see what happens later. Right, let's get on with it. So what I notice straight away is you get the distance in metres coming up. So I've just passed the 200. Looks about right so far. This is just on regular GPS, don't forget. Okay, so I did that both on the 945 on the left and the 245 on the right. And as you can see, I've got 862 metres on the 945 and 880 on the 245. So that's kind of the GPS difference you kind of normally expect. So just a quick look at the GPS tracks for the config runs. 245 was in the lighter blue one and the 945 in the in the sort of purple colour. So as you can see, I was running in lane five. And it's not done too bad actually, but definitely sort of the traditional sort of wobbly GPS tracks that you normally get with raw GPS data. So what I'm gonna do now is apparently you don't actually even have to run around the track in the right way. So I think I'm gonna do a test in lane eight, running the opposite way and then see how close to 400 meters I get by the end and see whether it's mapped this track properly, even though I did the mapping of the track in lane five. And if that works out, okay, I'll probably try a more regular one in lane one. So let's try and set up lane eight for my reverse run around the track. I found an interesting little feature. So if you go back to the track run, and because I set lane five, it's now asking me if I want to reset that to lane one. That's quite a nice little touch, because obviously mainly would be do doing uh, intervals in lane one, wouldn't you? So I'll say uh, yes, and then I'll go and reset it. So I go into the options here, and let's go into track run settings and set lane number to be number eight. And we'll just come out of that. And back to the data screen is ready to go. So I've just worked out to run lane eight in reverse. I need to start from the start finish line and run back around the track and finish at the stagger line. So that should be hopefully 400 meters run, whether it will pick up that on the bend remains to be seen. So here's a view of the lap pace and current pace as I'm running around. Looks fairly stable, I'm not going very fast at all, so looks about right. And here's another view of the same pace. I still seem to be hitting the same sort of pace, that's good. Right, we're coming up on the lap market there. How far gonna get? Da, 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 da. Bleep there. So both my watches have bleeped a 400 meter line and the actual stagger line is just behind me. So that's pretty good, let's go measure that out. So I'd say one, two, three. Well, I'd say that's about three or four meters over. So on one lap going around, that's pretty good. Okay, so I've reset my both my watches to lane one. I'm gonna do two laps 
at that sort of similar sort of casual speed in lane one. I think I might set the auto laps to 200 meters, then we'll see how close they are because we're able to get an exact reading four times then, won't I? So I'll do that and see how we go. Let's check actually that 200 meters is the shortest distance you can set an auto lap for, and the, the longest distance is bizarrely 10,000. Not quite sure how many people are going to want to auto laps at 10,000 run a track, but anyway, so 100 meters might be good, but I suppose it's difficult because of the straights to see sort of the shape of the bends. I guess you need some sort of element of turn to see when exactly they are. So I think 200 meters will do because I think if I did that manually, 200 meters would be the shortest distance I want to get information on, otherwise, you get information overload. But I think typically, going to say a long distance race like a 3k or a 5k or even longer, I'm just looking for those lap splits and seeing how they were steady compared to what I was going to do. Right, so let's get on with this run then and see where we go. Okay, through the first 100 meters, the instant pace is pretty steady around about 835, 840. That's kind of what I'm expecting. So let's wait for this bleep at 200 meters. See how close it is. I can see the line just coming up. There we go, bleeping. That's pretty much spot on. That's a good start. It's gone a bit quicker now, 825 pace. So we're coming up onto the end of the first lap. Let's see how close we get. And you can see that. Oh, 190 now. Line's coming up there. I'd say that was certainly within two meters, which is uh, pretty good, isn't it? Let's just check my right arm now, because normally sometimes the, the track watches more on the, on the right arm can be really bad. So we're coming up on the 200 meters anytime soon. So 20 meters to go, 10 meters, five meters, about to hit it. Now that was spot on, absolutely spot on. So that's very good, right. Last 200 meters, and this is look, working very well indeed, I must say. Right, coming up to the end of my 800. Right. How are we doing? Let's go back to the, go back to the 945. So there's the line coming up. We're 25 meters short, 20, 15. All right, stop it there. So hey, I hope you heard the bleeps. So that was literally bang on the line. So I thought that's pretty amazing, actually. So we configured it in lane five, ran a lap backwards in lane, lane eight and ran two regular laps in lane one. And that was pretty much bang on 400 meters. So it'd be interesting to see if I do that a bit faster than the calibration speed, would it matter or even slower? Oh, should we try that? Let's actually just walk a lap, shall I? Let's pick a random lap to walk. Let's say pick, I'll pick a random lane seven from the lane st st seven stagger, walk it round and see how we get there. Right, let's go over to lane seven then. And also set my lane to lane seven. Did always have notice of the lanes, you've got lanes one to nine. So most tracks, including this one, obviously a standard track is an eight lane one. You also get quite a few six lane ones. Occasionally you see a nine lane one with made a 10 lane straight, but uh, I don't think I've ever run on a 10 lane all rounds track. And I can't remember too many nine lane lanes tracks. Sometimes they have them in the very big court of competitions in case there's a time they need to put extra lane out for the final and stuff like that. But uh, so you've got that option if you were to uh, make the Olympic final and you wanted to time your uh, run from lane nine. <laughs> anyway, let's go to lane seven and do this little walk round test. Okay, so here I am on the lane seven stagger for the 400 meters and I've set my watch to be in lane seven there on the 945 and also on the 245 as well. And we'll just literally walk this round to see how we go. Just making sure I've got GPS green, looks all good to go. Right, start the watches and get going then. All right, as I say, nice little stroll. So don't think we'll get pace initially. I think for a while, lap pace and current pace are the same. So yeah, you see that on the Garmin, lap pace and current pace remain the same. I think it's 20 seconds or it starts to diverge, or is it 30? We'll soon see. Yeah, 20 seconds, they start to diverge. So there's my current pace just walking around. So this shouldn't be straight from GPS. This should be more based on the track shape rather than the actual GPS raw position. So there's obviously a bit of smoothing going on here, but even at walking speed, you're seeing I've got a very stable pace there. It's only showing it to the nearest five seconds, but um, yeah, it's almost impossible to run, you know, to the nearest second anyway, especially at this slow speed. So it's looking good so far. We'll check in at, um, 200 meters. Okay, so we're approaching the 200 meter line, but I need to run around it a bit or walk around it a bit to get to my stagger. So here I am on the watch, 180 meters just gone. See nice current pace at the bottom there, it's nice and stable. 
that pace is very similar because I've been walking steadily. You can see the line just about to come up here. 198, 197, 199. So I'd say that's for within a metre, so that's pretty good considering I'm actually at walking pace here and GPS could do all sorts of strange things at walking pace. So there's clearly some clever stuff going on here, far more than just the regular GPS. So let's walk it out to the proper finish line and see what our final distance is. Okay, so I've always got to the line. I've got 40 metres to go according to my watch. Let's see how we're going. You see a nice smooth current pace at the bottom. That's my 200 metre lap time, don't forget. So that's why it's um, not showing nearly 400, but 200. So we're coming up to the mile stagger, which will be just over nine metres to go any minute. This curve line here, and I'm on 194. So let's see when we go the line there, 200. So again, just walking rounds, those two bleeps were just bang on the line, I would say, certainly within a metre, which is pretty remarkable. So let's have a look at the GPS tracks from the track run runs when we done after we've done the config. And you, you can see straight away, this is pretty amazing tracks, far better than you've ever seen before, surely. Two ones in lane one here. We've got the sort of the red one there is the 245 and the blue one is the 945, but there's hardly any difference at all, is there? And then I was just overlaying that with the satellite track. You can see that there was within a few meters of being in the right lane. The other runs I did were in lane seven and eight, and you can see pretty well that that's cut to that as about as well as you're gonna, ever going to get. So I think this is a bit of a thumbs up for me on this feature from Garmin. I think as a track run, this is going to be great. So looking forward to get some very nice smooth graphs from my track runs to come. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting and I look forward to seeing you on the next one then. Bye.